No, Gar. <laughs> Hey guys, Steven Turner here with Turner Fishing. Welcome back to the channel. Oh man, it's getting hot out here. And if you're like a lot of anglers and you don't think you can catch crappy in the summertime and you think it's more of a spring fish, I'm here to prove you wrong. So stick tuned. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy these type of videos and let me show you how to catch a crappy in the summertime. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Alright, so finding summertime crappy. There's three steps. I always try to keep in my head. What time of day? Where's the shade? And where's the bait? So what I mean by that. When I put my boat in the water, which is normally around 5.30 to 6 o'clock, depending on not if I need to go get gas, you know, I try to be in the water, but at least by six every morning. So when you put when you put your boat in really early like that, right when the sun comes up, what it means is there's not a lot of shade on the water. There's, you know, really no shade at all, just a, maybe a little bit here and there. But so real early in the morning, the first thing I think about is open water brush piles. You know, it's real early in the morning. The wind's not kicking as hard as it's going to be throughout the day. It's a lot easier to sit on them brush piles if you're like me and don't have an oil tracks or anything. You know, you have a regular 12 volt trolling motor. It's a lot easier to sit on those offshore brush piles. Now, in order to find these brush piles, yes, you need electronics. But here's the thing, guys. I have about $400 worth of electronics, and I find brush piles just fine. I have a Helix 5 side image and a piranha max 4 up front on my trolling motor it's not the best in the world you can't really see anything on the side image but the down image works pretty good so i use that first thing in the morning looking for open water brush piles now i'm gonna play some clips of a brush right here and i'm show you a catch or two of open water brush pile fishing now what I like to do for open water brush pile fishing, I have a Mr. Crappy uh, spider spider rig uh, rod holder set up. There's my Piranha Max. And this right here is my bait tank for my minnows. It's just a Frabill Magnum Flow Troll. And number one thing on it, that baby bubbles on the back. If you ain't got the baby bubbles, your minnows are going to die as soon as it gets hot. And... I don't know about you, but would you rather eat roadkill or a deer that you just killed? You know? Or are you going to shoot a deer that's already dead? Or are you going to shoot a deer that's moving? You know, a fish ain't going to bite no dead minnow. I mean, it will. Don't get me wrong. You can catch some on dead minnows. But more than likely, it's not. And here's my Helix 5 KVD one. Just if you wanted to know. So real early in the morning, I'm thinking open water brush piles. Why? Because these fish, you got your brush pile here. It gets hot, they're going to be in this brush pile. You're going to be up here on top of the water, dying of sweat and all that stuff. So when it's early light, you know, they're out there brush pile. They're out here feeding, actively feeding. You can see them when you go over the depth finder. You just dot, 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 you know. And that's good. But once it gets hot, all these fish are going to go inside this brush pile. And that's where they're going to be. You know how hard it is to get a minnow in a brush pile? So, what do you do after that? We're going to find that out. But first off, guys, I'm going to show you all some clips of an open water brush pile, what it looks like on a depth finder. It's got crappy on it. You can see the white dots. And I catch a few off of it. And then we're going to move on to the next one. Let go catch him. All right, got one off of it. Nice little keeper. So it took me a little bit to find the dang brush. <laughs> I ain't got a map in the front. 
nice little probably nine inch. I ran over it with my minnow. Didn't get a bite. I dropped the old jig down there. He hammered it. This brush I'm fishing right now is probably 14 feet of water. That's a pretty big brush too. Hopefully there's a couple more on there willing to bite. There we go. Wow. Finally got one to eat a minnow. <laughs> Took long enough. I mean this brush pile is stacked. I mean, let's just how summer fishing it is. It's a freaking grind sometimes and you only got so long you know you can stay, stand it out here in the sun so this right here is pretty much <clears throat> what I caught those two fish off of but I done made like five or six passes over it I haven't caught another one, so I honestly believe I'm going to make the executive decision to go check some other brush piles and see if they're more active there. I mean, there's fish here, don't get me wrong, and I could probably pick up three or four in an hour, but it's going to be way too hot in about two more hours, so I am kind of want to pick up about ten before I head to the bridges, if that's even possible. I mean, I may strike out and only catch these two fish all day i mean that's just fishing but i'll make one more pass through here and then i'm gonna go i got three other brush piles i want to check and then if all else fails we'll go to big man's and clouds and see what we can pick up there so it's the middle of the day 11 o'clock it's hot you've got sweat pouring off of it. It's hot out here now. I think it's like 12 o'clock now when I'm shooting the next set of this video. But where do you go from there? Do you stay out in the sun and you burn to a crisp or do you go find some shade? The first thing I want to do after it gets hot is check docks. If you've got docks that you know got brush piles on them, check those. Fish the shade. I wouldn't worry about anything else on that dock but the shade. Check those out. See if there's fish there. Unfortunately, I didn't catch any on docks yesterday, but that would be my next thing. You know, throw a minnow out. And another thing you've got to have this, guys, is a baby bubbles or just some kind of bubble system. Yesterday, uh, I got the limit, but when I was on number 19, my batteries went dead in my bubblers and two dozen minnows died within three minutes so you've got to have the circulation and if you if you've got a shady spot on your boat keep them there but the second part of fishing the summer check docks that's why you always check your bridges in the summertime nice fish right there third and final thing that I'm going to cover and this is where I found them yesterday is check bridges summertime and bridges go hand in hand for crappy if you go to these bridges in the morning there's shade all around the bridges now, I'm not saying that this crappy's not going to be there. They could be there. Check the bridge. I mean, if you go under a bridge, hit it with your sonar. Hit it with your down scan. If you see a stack of them, sit there and fish them. But nine out of ten times before it gets hot or the sun gets up and makes the shade on those bridge piling, because say you got a bridge right here and you've got, you know, a sun coming up. There's no shade. But once that sun gets up here, all this back here is going to be shade. And that's where those fish are going to migrate to. So, 
I mean, it could be a whole bridge that has shade. You know, you got a bridge all up under its shade. So always check bridges. But once 11, 12, 1 o'clock, go to a bridge. I mean, honestly, it keeps you from being burnt. It keeps you from sweating to death. I mean, you're still going to sweat, but it's tolerable. Hell, get you a little fan on your boat under a bridge. Tie up. You're good to go. But... So I, I went to to this bridge, and what I found was I kept marking fish on my depth, the depth finder, you know, three, four foot. And I'm like, you know, that could be anything. But I ended up winding in my jig, and right before it got to the boat, thump. All right, cool. So I was like, all right. And then I happened to be trolling around, and I seen a pot of minnows. At the surface of the water and that was the key for today I dropped my poles down to about three foot where my, where my minnow was just barely under the water and it was just on after that so I'm gonna play those clips for you right here and so right I'll now explain it after all that you know it's 12 30 in the afternoon it's hot I'm just taking my poles. I mean, I could put four poles out, but it's just going to be more hassle than what I want. But I'm going to take my electric motor since the wind, I mean, the wind's phenomenal today. If the wind was blowing, you, it would be harder to do this. But I'm taking my poles and I'm running down these pillars. Right here, it's eight foot of water right here. And on the other one is 16 foot. Uh, I want my minnow is probably this far under the water, but they're they're coming up ambushing other minnows, so you just gotta get lucky and have your minnow be hit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. y'all I would find them <laughs> god it took all freaking day though that was a nice fish we just caught I didn't talk too much because when people were coming by but hell while I was taking him off my pole was sticking straight up there we go no no I found him now but my pole was sticking straight up and I had another one taken off with it. These jokers are stacked right here. Jesus. Now, I was going to be happy with just trolling around, picking one off every now and then, but I'm, I'm good with this, too. Look out there and see if I can get another one. I, I was just thinking in my head, I don't know if they hit the jig or not, but Apparently they will. in here boy <laughs> doubled up that's what I'm 
talking about, guys. There ain't nothing funner than this right here. Finding them just stacked on the spot. This guy in the live wheel. I mean, this one right here ain't no biggie. But. So, as you can see, guys, bridges are phenomenal after the, it gets really hot. I mean, like like I said before, it helps you. It helps the fish. It's a lot, a lot more tolerable. You know, you're not out there dying. But yeah, guys. I mean, I caught them on jigs. I caught them on minnows. It's whatever you want to fish for. I just like to fish efficiently, so I was using both at the same time. But like I said in the beginning of the video, you got to have, you got to, you got to think about the time of the day. You got to think about where the shade's at. And you got to find where the bait fish is in the column. If you can find those three things or figure out those three things, you can target whatever structure you want and catch crappy. It's, it's not rocket science in the summer. It's a lot easier in the spring. There's a lot more tight schools of crappy. But if you can find where the bait's at, you can find a brush pile that's got some fish on it. You can put that jig or that minnow in front of their face they're gonna eat it so like, like I said in all my videos fishing is fishing it's not catching sometimes it takes all day to figure them out like that bridge that I caught them in just uh, in just in a little part of just in the past part of this video sorry I can go there tomorrow morning nothing there ain't gonna be nothing there I may be there tomorrow morning I don't know maybe and I could pull up there and limit out in 30 minutes or I'm gonna have to go check those five or six brush piles I checked yesterday there's five or six docks I checked yesterday those three or four bridges I checked before I found a bridge that had fish it it takes running around it takes graphing it takes all that and it's different from day to day but once you find them it's on I hope y'all enjoyed this video and I hope it helped you some and put some more slabs in your boat guys. So if you enjoyed this content, let me know it down below with a comment. And as always, if you haven't already, hit that button right there. Almost to a thousand subscribers. And I'll catch y'all next time.